Walthamstow lies in the borough of Waltham Forest in East London. The home of the band E17, socialist artist William Morris, and the now defunct Walthamstow Dogs track. Here you can find everything from the stillness of the marshes to the hustle and bustle of the market with its pie and mash shops, halal butchers, African food stalls, East London pubs, and much more. And in 2012, the diverse borough of Waltham Forest was selected as one of five Olympic boroughs. Waltham Forest is, is really so diverse and has one of the oldest and largest Pakistani communities in this country. We've allowed the weakening of our collective identity. Under the doctrine of state multiculturalism, we've encouraged different cultures to live separate lives apart from each other and apart from the mainstream. When you say multicultural and feral, you're pointing at everyone who people see as the other, anyone who looks different to you, uh, even though we're born and bred here. He was painting the brush of Islamist extremism against all Muslim groups, Muslim individuals, and especially when the state leader is validating those beliefs, you can imagine how emboldened people become. And so what it led to was a spike in uh, Islamophobic attacks, especially against Muslim women. There were women who were fearful to leave their homes, had to plan, till this day, like, you know, women have to plan their day when they leave the house. Where am I safe? Is my headscarf going to be ripped off today? At the same time as David Cameron's speech, the fascist EDL gathered in Luton. Every time they marched, they attacked people on the way. They, they got criminal convictions for like murdering people with learning difficulties. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking very serious levels of violence. So that, well, it's not a march, that's, that, that, that's an attack. The EDL soon set their sights on Walthamstow due to its large Muslim population. They announced a march for September 2012. I was shocked because I knew how vicious and dangerous the EDL are. I've got Jewish heritage, so I'm well aware of the horrors of Nazism and fascism. And my thought was just over my dead body. They want to march on mosques um, and they want to march from the central uh, Walthamstow to the mosque in the heart of the community. And uh, we oppose that. But the police were not neutral. Officially, they said they have a right to march. Um, I don't think you have a right to intimidate or attack people. I don't think that as a right. I think that's it's a criminal organisation and it should have been treated as a criminal organisation. But that's not what happened. Any attempts to get the EDL march banned ultimately failed, leaving the Muslim community vulnerable. This is a story of how the community came together to defend itself against the threat of fascism. This was the community coming out to saying, no, this is our borough. There was a whole issue around whether we should even protest. Uh, the council was saying, no, 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 you should just ignore the EDL. Like, if you have a counter protest, then that's just going to create the violence. So we had to change the narrative. You have to challenge um, racists and fascists and you have to say to them, this isn't your space. Originally, um, Unite Against Fascism had already been organising within Waltham Forest and sort of had a committee of people that were meeting fairly regularly. We started to hold public meetings, um, campaign meetings. More and more people started to come to our organising meetings. It became a job. It literally became another job. Um, I was exhausted. Um, my partner at the time said they were a UAF widow and uh, all this. And uh, we literally, I didn't come off the phone ringing up union, uh, union reps, ringing up union uh, members to back up their union reps. We, we, we mobilised with uh, street leaflets, uh, tube stations, shopping centres, uh, workplaces, mosques, most importantly the mosques, because we wanted the mosque leadership, if you like, uh, to come on board. I heard of a protest, they'd been advertised on Facebook, and I just thought, what, against thousands of EDL people, we're just going to have, what, like 100 anti-racism activists standing there and who go, who's going to go to these things? It, also, I knew that like a there'd be a lot of like young people, aggressive young people wanting to go out there for a fight, right? Um, but generally, like, I just didn't feel comfortable with it. Our elders in the community are generally don't like confrontation. We had a council of mosque meeting and they said, look, we're not going to get involved because the council already spoke to the members and said, don't come out. 
at the council meeting, they were very much trying to discourage stand-up to racism from coming as a counter demo. And I was just a fly in the walls, just supposed to listen, with no mandate to join any demo, counter demo. And then Ulrika, she stood there and said, don't put us in the same boat as these troublemakers. We're coming out with our women and children. We're standing and claiming what's right for our own hometown. Uh, and we're standing there to defend our brothers, Muslim brothers and sisters. And when I heard that, I was thinking, women and children are going to come out to defend us and we're going to stay at home? That's not possible. So I went back to the council of mosque and said, we're coming out. There's no way we're staying at home. And then I said, that's it. We're going to have to make it happen. We're, we're joining the people that are standing up for us. We're going to stand in solidarity and stand up and be counted. On the day itself, I remember getting down to the town square at sort of, I don't know, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. And even at that point, people were worried about whether or not we should actually march. I think we said kick off at 12 or 12.30. Um, and we had the choir dancing, which was a beautiful intro, local choir and everything. But I said to my mate, Judith Hall, I said, Judith, it's 20 to 12. There's no one here. Judith says, it'll happen, it'll happen. And I was like, no, this is really freaking me out. I don't think we've got it. I don't. She said, why don't you go and have a coffee? <laughs> Get out of my face, go and have a coffee. And I kid you not, I came back 15 minutes later and I was just in total awe of what was going on. It was just unbelievable. Look, field. And what was so beautiful was people I'd never seen before. I live right near the main road, Forest Road, um, right near Waltham Forest College, and so we heard noise and we'd seen stuff on Facebook and we thought, oh, actually, it's not such a bad idea after all. Let's go and see what the fuss, let's go see what's going on. I think it became the curiosity of, let's go see what was going on. When we walked up to Forest Road, you know, unbeknown to me, I, I was shocked that there was thousands of people on the streets. And it was heartwarming because I didn't realise that we had that kind of community. Um, there was thousands of people and then all you see is like a few, like 200 or less EDL people and a circle of police around them. And it was the irony that the police are protecting these racist individuals and we're the ones that are being made to look like the criminals. There was the alliance of mosques, there were individual women from the Pakistani community and there were, you know, brothers and sisters from all races, all ages, out. The EDL planned to march up Forest Road to meet their leader, Tommy Robinson, outside the town hall. However, the local community took non-violent action to prevent this from happening, with thousands of people turning up to sit down by the bell corner, which blocked their path. This left Tommy Robinson isolated. So the sit-down protest took place just behind me there, and the ED were coming up from Blackhall Station. Now clearly the police couldn't take him to join Tommy Robinson at the other side. So they could have just stopped here, and that would have been a sensible thing to do. But for some reason they were adamant to facilitate the EDO to make, try and get to their uh, leader. And what they end up doing is taking the march down this residential street, down this side road, where people were enjoying their own time off. People, there were children out here, women who got abused, racially abused, as they EDO made their way through here. Cars got damaged, property got damaged, and all because the police were insistent on trying to facilitate the EDO uh, demonstration to try and reach their final point, which they didn't get to anyway. They made it to only Farnham Avenue. Tommy Robinson giving a speech and someone's gone and pulled the plug. I'm not going to say no names, but yeah. Someone's gone and pulled the plug and he's getting angry now because we've more or less taken over his rally bit. <laughs> He got up here, he stood up here and he started doing this. He started doing all of this, all of this, all of this. We couldn't hear a word he was saying and just everyone was just shouting and, and just get off, get off, get off. And then the police escorted him away and uh, took him away to the other side. There were at least 150, 200 young people who were determined not to vacate until the EDL was gone. So has the, the EDL's plan and demonstration utterly failed? They were left dejected and they were, the police were forced to escort them back through those side roads, to down Forest Road, back to Black Horse Road Station. And as they did that, obviously they, frustrated as they were, and drunk and, and uh, violent as they are, they turned on the police, as we would expect, as they've done time and time again. And of course, 
our peaceful demonstration remained peaceful and we made a victory parade back to the town square and ended the day on a high. And as the people come out of the shops and clapped and everything, that's when you knew. You, it's difficult to explain that feeling, but that's when you're up and you know on, you're, you're riding on adrenaline and you're also riding on brotherly love, if that makes sense, or human love. You know, that whole thing that we're, we're all together. You know, the, the divisions have all fallen away. They were kettled by the police until 10 o'clock that night outside Black Horse Road um, tube station and the comments that were on the English Defence League chats the next day, they, they, were, they were in utter disarray. If we had not done that protest, um, what would it lead to, you know? They've won and that probably would have given them more of a boost. Let's go to another area, let's go to another area. How far could they have gone? So what we did was we took a stand, you know? As, as a community, we, we, we came together. No racism, no Islamophobe, no nothing. It was, it was a massive nail in the coffin of, of the EDL. They went from an organisation that was going from strength to strength to be um, stopped. And stopped is what they were. And then they went from being stopped to disintegrating and internally exploding. It shows that, it shows that protest works. My activism days hadn't begun then. And I was like, hold on a second, you know, why can't I get involved? And so for me, that was... That was one of the kind of turning points for my own activism journey as well. As an organised force, this was pivotal. This is one time where we said we're standing out as a collective. All the mosques in the borough came together and spread that message to people that we're standing for justice and peace. And we won't let people who are causing hate and division from outside come into our uh, town and cause division. Within 12 months of the protest, Tommy Robinson resigned as leader of the EDL. In spite of the success of that day, the fight against racism continues. But now Priti Patel's new bill would criminalise the action that Walthamstow took that day. I've heard of Muslim women planning, like, still till this day, as a result of the kind of spike in Islamophobic attacks at the time, don't go on public transport. They drive everywhere, even in central London. According to Priti Patel, it'd be illegal to come out as a unified community to stop an attack on one part of it, a Muslim, our Muslim brothers and sisters. That would be illegal. This is, this, this is very dangerous, I think, for us. So we need to celebrate unity and oppose division. It's classic, isn't it? We've got the legislation because we need to protest. Climate change, uh, growth of racism, uh, uh, cost of living. What we've got to be is always mindful. And we've always got to keep that solidarity and that comradeship and and hold on to the faith that we all have and that is one day we will stamp out racism.